hey, I'm in Southern California visiting one of my best friends who I haven't seen in a very long time. And I've been away from my daughter for a couple of days and it'll be five days total that I am not with her or taking care of her. And my partner and her dad are tracking her and taking care of her right now. And wow, it is so eye-opening to be out of the energy field of my kid and realize that most of the time I'm scared as her parent. It's very deep, it's very unconscious, but most of the time I'm really scared that something terrible is gonna happen to her. And I 100% know, because I'm a therapist and a trauma survivor who's done so much work, I 100% know that it's because of my childhood. And so many terrible things happen to me that I can't conceive on a nervous system level that my kid is safe. And now that I'm separate from her, I'm feeling how deeply stressful that is. Every age that she turns is a year where something horrific happened to me because my parents abused me. So every single year was a terrible year and every single age was a terrible year till I left home when I was 16. So even though I have this full, beautiful, creative life and incredible closeness with my daughter, now that I'm away from her, I can feel that I'm bracing. I'm always bracing. And that's what PTSD gives you. That's what post-traumatic stress is. It's like your life just smells, looks, tastes, feels just enough like the past to make your whole body protect itself. And I think that most parents or many parents who have traumatic backgrounds, they feel like the only break they can get from the stress is to get away from their kid, right? I mean, this is what parents do. They just, they distance, they block, they push, they project, they abuse their children because of the level of memory and trauma and helplessness and powerlessness that child rearing brings up it's built into it it's like we're trying to bond and as we're bonding we are remembering what happened to us when we bonded we had to love the people who hurt us so i have myself thinking what is the next level of healing that i need to do to let go more i'm, I'm just thinking about that is there is there another kind of practice that i need in my therapy or in my own life to be able to trust that my daughter is safe. I don't wanna spend the rest of her childhood this scared. And I wasn't really aware of it. I'm more aware of it now that I'm away. I think for me, it has to do with parts, parts work. So I have parts of me that don't know she's safe and parts of me that don't know that I'm safe. So I think I'm gonna to have to work with these parts of me directly. I know that my work on this app and with parents is to really help them separate the past from the present. And that sounds so simple, but it's the hardest thing in the world. And so I'm always encouraging parents to get a process because if you don't have a process, then all you can do is react to your child. And when you react to your child, you are handing down your trauma. Our children can become our tormentors because they're making us feel things we locked away and promised ourselves we would never feel again. I'm not even saying that I can control that, but the fact that I know that, the fact that I know how it works, that's how I break the cycle. So right now, as I'm on this trip, I'm practicing feeling safe. I'm practicing coming down. This is a rare opportunity for me to feel myself as myself. I know so many parents do not have that privilege um, to feel your energy field as your own. And a lot of times what happens with parents when they get around their children, besides distancing, is control. We, tr we control our children to feel safe. And we control ourselves to feel safe. And so what does it mean? What does it mean to let go? What does it mean to practice opening, coming out of control and opening to learning?